you take one nap on a Saturday evening and look what happens. Packer Nation! Welcome to another episode of Podcast, the podcast where you don't have to be Packer Sand, but it sure does help. I'm your host, Tom. If this trade has proven anything, it's that I should get less sleep than I already do, perpetuating and continuing the cycle of mental decline until my entire life is consumed by the tweets of Adam Schefter and Ian Rappaport. Grassi. And today, tonight, we are going to be breaking down the blockbuster trade that has sent Matthew Stafford to the LA Rams and Jared Goff to the Detroit Lions. Yeah, this is a big one. And I got to say, while I was looking into this, first, first, (laughs) first I woke up and I was like, okay. All right, took a little nap on a Saturday night because, you know, it's my day off. No worries. We chill. So I can take a little bit of nap. I was going to come down here and do some editing, you know, for, for the weekend stuff. And uh, then I opened Twitter and they were like, Tom, Tom, where are you? I need to know your thoughts. Tom, you awake? And so now, now, now I'm awake. And I have to say, this is a little surprising. I know the, the Rams popped up as potential contenders for Matthew Stafford within the past 24 hours. But Stafford was heavily, heavily rumored to go to the 49ers, which just made a lot of sense. Now, I'm not saying that this doesn't make a lot of sense, but considering the details of the trade, considering kind of what the landscape of the Rams and Lions are going to look like after this trade, this is this is a real interesting one. So to break down the details and the logistics of this trade, the Detroit Lions are getting a 2021 third round pick and a first round pick in 2022 and 2023, and of course, Jared Goff. Now, in exchange, the Rams are getting Matthew Stafford. And when you first look at this, you're like, what? Because it seems that the Rams got fleeced, right? That they got completely and totally ripped off. And I'm not saying that they didn't, but I think actually this benefits both teams pretty damn well. Because this isn't just a straight up deal of quarterback for quarterback and the Rams just threw a bunch of picks in there because they thought Stafford was that good over Goff. No, this was more about getting rid of Goff's massive contract that he signed after the Super Bowl in which you had the Rams really kind of go all in on guys like Todd Gurley and Jared Goff. They were playing Brandon Cooks a whole bunch of money. And as you saw, right, they kind of trickled away. They had to go to other teams, and the Rams were in a lot of cap space problems. And then Jared Goff has been how Jared Goff has been, which has not been, like, god-awful, but it's been, like, aggressively mediocre and has not lived up to that contract that he signed. Now, fast forward to this year when Goff didn't play that well, and you had comments, like, from McVay, who was like, yeah, he's got to step up and he's got to play better. Then you had comments by the GM, who was just like, yeah, he's a ram for right now. And then news coming out that it was going to be a QB battle in camp between Wolford and Goff, which is not a great sign. So while the Rams give up a lot of draft capital, one, they get their QB that they can win with right now, and two, they get Jared Goff off the books. So the Rams are going to inherit two years of Stafford's contract, which is going to amount to about $43 million. Meanwhile, Detroit is going to be given four years of Jared Goff's contract and $106.6 million that still needs to get paid out. So the Lions basically said, hey, we're going to take your draft picks. I will take Jared Goff too, but basically we're going to spend a crap ton of money on Jared Goff, who's probably not going to be the future in Detroit. So the Rams are like, okay, here you go. Like this is like that that trade a few years ago when they traded Brock Osweiler to the Browns, and basically the Browns are like, okay, we'll take your draft picks, right, and we'll basically pay this bill for you. And apparently there were multiple teams that were very interested in Stafford, which also included first round picks. But honestly, this deal was just too good to pass up for the Lions, who really just went out across the board here. 
And what this trade really represents is two completely different mindsets about the team, right? So let's start off with the LA Rams. The LA Rams are getting a 32-year-old Matthew Stafford, who had a nice season, even though he dealt with a bunch of injuries this year, threw for over 4,000 yards, 26 touchdowns, and 10 interceptions. And I have always, always been of the mindset that Matthew Stafford is such an underrated quarterback, never had a team built around him, never really had a power running game, never really had a defense, and Matthew Stafford is one tough son of a gun. I know he missed a couple of games last year because of some significant injuries, but man, that guy has taken a beating every single year that he has been in Detroit, and he still is one of the best QBs in the league. So the Rams will have Stafford for at least another two years, and honestly, just being 32 years old, I know he's got a lot of miles on him, but I think that he could play for at least another four years. But again, this just represents the win now mentality. And if that's not evident with Matthew Stafford, look at their draft situation. Because they have now traded away their 2022 and 2023 first round picks, that will be seven years that the Rams will have gone without drafting in the first round. So unless they wind up trading up and trading, you know, day two capital to move on up, that's a long, long time. And that's kind of been the mentality of the Rams. They think that they have a team that they can win with right now. They went to a Super Bowl with the team. We're not able to get back to that point, even though they made it to the divisional round this year. And I really do think that Stafford makes them a contender. He's going to have an entire offseason to work with Sean McVay. I think they have great receivers and guys like Cooper Cup and Robert Woods. Obviously, they have a pretty dynamic backfield when they're all healthy. And the defense is really damn good. So right off the bat, the Rams have kind of been in like this, okay, we're good, we're not so good kind of limbo. I think Stafford puts them over the top and they will be contenders to potentially win their division now. Again, the window for success is definitely smaller, but if we're going to go with this win-now mentality, you might as well go all in. Now, talking about what the Lions get out of this, this is kind of committing to the long-term rebuild. If the Rams are short-term and looking at that window closing, the Lions are just like, hey, listen, you know, we could do this on our own time. They obviously have a new GM, and they also have a kneecap-biting new head coach. And this is the kind of mentality that you're going to need, right? In which the Lions have perpetually always been in this, okay, maybe it'll be this year that we, we wind up being good. And I have said this many times on this channel, like, okay, maybe this is the year, and it just never has happened. And so what this is going to be is the Lions were never one player away, right? This is a downgrade at the QB position. It is, just straight up. Matthew Stafford is a better quarterback than Jared Goff is. Now, that doesn't mean that Jared Goff can't be built back up into a system. It doesn't mean that at all. Now, I will say he's not going to have a defense to carry him and also an offense, which he does have weapons. He definitely has weapons. You know, it, it might find it a little bit more challenging in Detroit. But the Lions are now set up to be whatever team they want to be. They have the number seven overall pick this year, which means that it's not out of the realm of possibility that they actually draft a QB in this draft and basically have him sit behind Jared Goff. Definitely don't learn about the whole interception thing, but you basically have a free reign to say, okay, we can build a team around a franchise QB. Or they can go and decide and build around Jared Goff. And if it works out, cool. If it doesn't, well, then they get a low draft pick anyway. And now they have two first round picks the next two years. That's a home run for the Lions. And if Lions fans are sitting there right now, kind of wondering what their team is going to be, I think this is the best case scenario for you. Because for the first time in a long time, for the Lions, it's like, hey, let's not rush through this crap, and instead, let's slowly, methodically build this team. And so, yes, are you going to be good this year? There's a possibility you're not, but at the same time, the future's looking pretty darn good, especially if the GM and also the head coach work out. Now, they are getting Jared Goff, who threw for just under 4,000 yards this year, 20 touchdowns and 13 interceptions. And let's be completely honest, Jared Goff has not been the same QB since the Super Bowl, you know, putting up all three points there in the Super Bowl. But that doesn't mean that they can't win with Jared Goff. So worst case scenario for the Lions, Jared Goff doesn't work out. Yes, they're going to have to pay him a bunch of money, but you're stacked in the first round for the next two years after this draft, and you have a top 10 pick this year. Yeah, the possibilities are kind of endless for the Detroit Lions. So there's going to be a lot of articles that are come out of like who won this trade. And honestly, I think this just benefits both teams. It's just two completely different mindsets. It's a win now mentality for the Rams. It's a let's rebuild the right way and be a competitive team in the future 
for the Detroit Lions. On the surface, I think it does look like the Lions wind up winning this trade just because the amount of value that they're able to get for Stafford is, is pretty extraordinary. And I think that as Lions fans, you gotta be pretty damn happy. But meanwhile, the Rams, I mean, you have at least two years of a damn good quarterback, so... Don't mess this one up. And finally, this trade actually can't officially go through until March 17th, which is going to be the start of the new NFL season. We'll see how this thing progresses. It'll be interesting to see as both teams are going to be playing each other this year as well. So that's going to be a whole lot of fun. And I think it also poses some more questions about the Deshaun Watson thing. If that trade is going to go through, good God, he is going to command so much draft capital. It's going to be insane. But... We have a blockbuster trade this evening, breaking at 10 p.m. Eastern, putting out this video or recording this video at 12.45 in the morning. So it's a good one. But let me know what you think down in the comments below. You can always find me at TomGrassyComedy.com or at TomGrassyComedy, all social media you see down below. Check out podcasts on SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play Music, Spotify, and of course, YouTube. And a big shout and thank you to all the patrons over at Patreon.com slash TomGrassyComedy and the YouTube members. But thank you so much for watching. I'm Tom Grassy. And as always, go Pack Go. Thank you.